Previously on What You Hanna Do Summer Train Travel Series Day 1. We started our summer train travel journey officially from Yokohama and made our way to our first stop, Higashi Shizuoka. We went to Nihondaira Yume Terrace, ate some kakigori, rode a ropeway to Konozan Toshogu, enjoyed the beauty of the shrine, and saw where Ieyasu Tokugawa was originally laid to rest. After that, we traveled far to Nagoya, had some spicy Taiwanese ramen, gyoza, and delicious fried rice, and then made our way to Gifu. At Gifu, despite the rain, took a chance to see Gifu Castle and got to see a spectacular night view of Gifu City, and ended the day with that. On day two, we continue our travel from Gifu and make our way to Dinosaur Prefecture, Fukui. Here we go! <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to day two of our Japan summer travels. We are saying goodbye to Gifu and to Oda Nobunaga and we'll be going to Shiga and Fukui today, two prefectures I've never been to before and as usual I'm super excited. My name is Hannah and this is What You Hannah Do, Japan summer travel day two. Woo! What you Hannah do, Japan what you Hannah do when they come for you. Japan summer train travel. <laughs> We decided to leave Gifu quite early, even though there is actually still so much to see and do in Gifu, like bungee jumping at Japan's highest bridge, seeing the cool architecture at the site of Reversible Destiny, and seeing Shirakawa Go and Hida Takayama. But like I said, this is a travel buffet, and I have put Gifu on my list of places I would love to go back to and explore more. Maybe next time with a car. So we made our way to our next prefecture of the day, Shiga but stopping at Maibara Station first to change trains and then taking another train to take us one stop away to Hikone. This is so cute! Meet Hikodon. Hikodon is their mascot. <laughs> so cute! And check this out. This is real samurai regalia, right? That's amazing! So we just got to Hikone in Shiga. Ooh! So right now we're gonna go to Hikone Castle. We can't go inside because it's a little too early, but we are going to go around. We can. Oh, we can? Cool. What's pretty cool is that the castle is only 10 minutes on foot from Hikone Station. So that makes it super accessible. We are now at the castle grounds and wow, let me just say everything is so superb, so clean, it's so well maintained. Ah, oh, this is great. There are several ticket bundles at Hikone Castle. You can buy tickets to the castle and Genkyuen, which is the castle gardens for 800 yen, Genkyuen only for 200 yen, and entrance to the castle, Genkyuen and Hikone Castle Museum for 1,200 yen. We decided to go to the castle and the gardens. We're gonna go check that out. I just wasn't expecting to be climbing again today. <laughs> Hikone Castle was completed in 1622 and in 2007 turned 400 years old. It's a castle on a hilltop, hence a bit of a climb. <laughs> and it served as a seat for feudal lords until 1868. It survived post-feudal era and everything including the main keep, walls, gates, and most of the inner moats remain intact. It's quite small, but it has a unique design that combines a couple of different architectural styles, which is why it has been designated as a national treasure. Only four other castles in Japan have that kind of designation, so Hikone Castle is pretty special. The stairs inside the castle are a little steep and we had to carry our shoes around in a plastic bag, but it was kind of cool. They also had these holes in different shapes inside the castle, which are not visible from outside, called teppozama and yazama. The triangular holes or teppozama were used for guns to fire on approaching enemies, and the square ones or yazama were used for arrows. The main keep has about 75 of these embrasures. Aside from that, we also got a nice view of the whole city. We could even see Lake Biwa from the castle. Pretty cool!
Just came from the castle. Wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> there were a lot of people, so it took a bit of a time for us to get in and out of the castle. There was really much inside and I prefer the outside, but I think it was a good experience. Kind of like see what the people back then could see from the different levels of the castle. Since I feel like I deserve a treat after all of that, and since I'm super sweaty right now, we are now in an area near Hikone Castle, and it's giving me major Kurashiki vibes, and I'm really loving it in this area. So we're gonna look for maybe something to drink and something to snack on before leaving Hikone. This is Hikonyan, by the way, and he was created by the government of Hikone to celebrate the 400th year anniversary of Hikone Castle. Adorable! Right now, we're in a restaurant called Omiya. Basically means Omi Beef Restaurant. Ah, Orders are here. They serve Omi Beef, which is basically beef from this prefecture. We ordered a roast beef meal and a gyudon meal and it's it's wow so this restaurant was very generous with having us film in here and they really do want to showcase and it's quite famous the whole restaurant is filled with autographs of famous people from all over the world who came here to try this beef i know we said we would eat a snack but we can't pass on this right itadakimasu I'll start with a salad. Very fresh, very light in a sesame type dressing. Try the miso soup. Mm. Oh. Mm. This is one of the softest miso soups I've ever had. Very delicate tasting. It's good. Without further ado, we're gonna try the roast beef. Mm. Mm. Definitely luxurious. The meat is super tender. It's not the type that falls in your mouth. It still has a bite to it, but it's still, still very tender and flavorful. I don't think this is similar to the Yonezawa beef that we had in our previous Sohoku travel. This is a league on its own. A different, different meat, I feel. And the sweetness of the sauce complements it so beautifully. Mm. Next, I'll have some of the gyudon. Mm. 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 Delicious. I highly recommend this restaurant. 11 out of 10. After having that scrumptious meal, we wanted to get some dessert, so we found a fancy cafe with some cakes and had a bit of a rest before heading back to the station. Yes, that, that was milk. <laughs> so we've had a lovely walk around Hikone and a lovely lunch. 
<laughs> really lovely lunch. Now we're almost at the station. We don't know which city we're gonna stop by yet before going into Fukui, but we know that we have to change trains anyway. So we're not sure yet if we're gonna go down that city and then look around or not. So we'll see, we're not entirely sure yet. I find him so cute. <laughs> Hikonyang. I love him so much. <laughs> you <laughs> goodbye hikonyan until we meet again looking back i should have bought some kind of souvenir of hikonyan because he was just too cute anyway we continued our travel to fukui and decided to go straight to tsuruga in fukui prefecture we had to do a brief stop at omishiotsu station though to change trains but didn't really look around it took us around 40 minutes to get to omishiotsu station and then another 20 minutes to tsuruga station so we just got to Tsuruga station and we were about to rent some bikes until it started raining <laughs> just as we completed our registration of renting bikes. So we're going to wait this out a little bit and then we're going to go around Tsuruga. Ah, the weather isn't really on our side today. <laughs> the rain eventually stopped, so we left our bags in a locker, got our bikes and started cycling around the city. <laughs> it's my first time using a motorized bike. I'm not used to it yet. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> this is so much easier than using my little mama chari back at home. <laughs> I love it. No wonder people buy these things. So much easier. <laughs> We're now at Kijinja. Uh, we're not gonna go in anymore, we're just gonna pass by. I think using these rented bicycles around the city is a lot more fun. So we're gonna keep going. We also didn't exactly have a lot of time to really explore the city, so we just passed through a lot of the tourist sites. This is so cool. Got Japan Coast Guard over there. You got mountains over there. And see? Oh, here's the deck thing. And look at this like deck. It looks like a, a sea uh, a ships. What do you call that? Ships. <laughs> Yeah, the edge of the ship. Urashi! <laughs> <laughs> we stopped to check out the Tsuruga red brick warehouses just to see what's up. Also, wanted to check out the raptor in a doctor's coat. <laughs> because I love dinosaurs. <laughs> My friend! Hello, Mr. Dr. Velociraptor. <laughs> wow. If you're wondering why there was a dinosaur just right over there, we are in Fukui. And Fukui is known as Dinosaur Prefecture. About 80% of all dinosaur fossils found in Japan is from Fukui. I'll introduce more about that tomorrow when we actually go around Fukui. For now, we're at the red brick warehouse. We're just gonna check what's inside and then we're gonna go. They have some goods, souvenir omiyage, I guess. And they also have a restaurant inside. They also have a diorama area, but we're not gonna go in. For now, we just want to really enjoy biking around the city. And bike we did. 
We just loved looking around the streets and just seeing how different everything was to Tokyo where we live and other prefectures we've been to. Ah! It's rainy! <laughs> no! I was enjoying so much and then it started to rain. Now we are a little bit wet. And thankfully there's this spot where there's a... Um, it's covered. I think we are going to do our best to get back to the station. Because <laughs> we don't know how long this rain will last. This area near the station took us way back in time. It's like this area got stuck in the Showa era. Old and quite nostalgic. Pretty cool though. As much as we want to enjoy more, we can't really control the weather. So we're going back to the station to return these bikes and then we're going to head on to Fukui City. We got a little wet, but we made it safely back to the station. We rode our very last train for the day to our last stop of the day, Fukui City in Fukui Prefecture. We just got to our last stop for the day, Fukui, and I am going nuts because Fukui is dinosaur prefecture and I'm a big, big, big dinosaur girl. Ooh, I, I, it's everywhere. Dinosaurs are everywhere here and I'm so excited. The kid in me is just... Sorry for being all over the place. I just, I'm so excited. I'm going a little bit crazy just because. But um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check in our hotel and then after a little bit of a rest, we're gonna go out and get some grub. I'm feeling a lot better now that we were able to rest a little bit. I'm usually excited to eat and now is no different. So we're going to a store called Echizen Tsuruki Soba. So obviously they serve soba and it's quite a famous restaurant here in Fukui. I just found out today that Fukui is actually known for its soba and they put a lot of katsuboshi or bonito flakes on top. I like that. <laughs> so our orders are here. It's looking so gorgeous. So this is like a variety, an assorted type of soba. So we have here one that has onion leeks and katsuboshi, one that has, I'm not sure, maybe this is koyo egg, smaller egg, I'm not sure from which bird, with nori or seaweed and onion leeks, a little bit of wasabi. We have one with ebi or shrimp tempura on top, one with nametake kinoko, which is quite slimy actually. I love it, especially on miso soup with daikon oroshi, so grated daikon, onion leeks, and one with, I think this is wild vegetables and onion leeks. And they gave us two different types of sauce. The suggested sauce, this is for on the right, the right sauce, on the left, the left sauce, and in the middle, any, it goes well with both. Itadakimasu. Ooh. The soba noodles are different widths, so it's definitely made here. Mm. Mm. Very simple flavors. It's quite good. It's very simple and light for you guys who like really strong flavors this might not be for you but i personally like it next i'll move over to this side so i can try the different sauce oh oh this is yamaimo or mountain yam it's quite slimy, very much like um, lady fingers or okra, the inside part. The texture is very similar to that. I'm not the biggest fan of yamaimo, but I do like it on soba. <laughs> it definitely looks slimy. 
Here we go. Hmm. Hmm. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I, I'm liking it right now. It's good. They also put wasabi in this, so it tastes more of a traditional soba for me. I'll move back to this side. Mm. Mm. Oh, I love mushrooms. Mushrooms are slimy. It's hard to get them. <laughs> there we go. Next one. I'm excited for this one because I love wild vegetables. This is my favorite so far. This is definitely a lot of soba for one person, but I have a quite a big appetite, so no problem finishing it. <laughs> Last but not least, ebi or shrimp tempura with the soba. From the two sauces, I do prefer this one the most. So I'm gonna use this for the last one. Let's try the tempura first. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Yum. Last bite. Mm. Yum. Out of the five, I love the ebi tempura, but as a whole dish, I really love the one with the wild vegetables. It was delicious. I also surprisingly like the one with the yamaimo or mountain yams. I really wasn't expecting to like that, but I actually really did. Mm. On day three, we get up early and excited to get on a train to go to the place I've been so looking forward to go to the most, the Fukui Prefectural Dinosaur Museum. After going crazy, we said goodbye to the dinosaurs and headed to Kanizawa in Ishikawa Prefecture where we ate some super delicious curry. Rawr! And that's it! Thank you so much for coming along with us on day two of our Japan summer travel series. Ugh, it was a long day with the weather being really weird. So we need to get to bed really early today because we're going to my happy place tomorrow and I'm so excited, of course. And as always, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you want to see more content about Japan, you know what to do. So until next time, Janet and see you in the next video. Woo! Ha, 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 ha.